Good morning, um, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Darren Bowden, the CEO of Metals Exploration. Um, thank you for attending this uh, webinar. I'm coming to you live from uh, the Manila in the Philippines. Um, I'd just like to run you through our um, investor presentation, which went up on our website live about a week ago. Um, I'll try and uh, there's a lot of overlapping information, so I'll uh, I'll try and speak to the slides where the detail is rather than where the summaries are in the majority, um, and only cover the information once uh, if possible as we go through. If I miss anything um, or if there's something else you would like to ask, please uh, just add it to the live Q&A and hopefully at the end uh, we will have enough time to pick up on any key questions that, uh, that everybody asks. Um, so with that said, I will uh, I'll move on to the presentation. And um, really uh, just a bit of background. Um, Metals Exploration owns um, a project uh, in the Philippines, uh, Ranruna Gold Mine. It's uh, in the mineral rich province of Nueva Vizcaya in the Philippines. And it was developed uh, by the um, uh, company from greenfields to production. Currently, we're sitting on a reserve of around 11.7 million tonnes at a grade of 1.38 grams a tonne. That's about 500,000 ounces of, uh, of reserves uh, in terms of gold group. Um, we're basically fully permitted. 98% uh, uh, of the workforce is Filipino, of which 28% are female. Um, very small contingent of expats uh, helping out um, to ensure the uh, the stability in ongoing operations. To date, we've invested over three hundred million dollars, and um, that's uh, someone else's phone in the background. Um, and um, yeah, we've uh, in twenty twenty, as in twenty nineteen, uh, we achieved around sixty eight thousand uh, ounces in production. Our total all in sustaining costs. And this includes all costs, all corporate costs, uh, head office in London, everything, uh, $1,259 an ounce, at a total revenue of around uh, $122 million in 2020. We move on to the next slide. Um, our strategy, when we first started, um, it was uh, very focused on getting the company back up into a positive cash flow. Um, we Darren, focused on Darren, people. Darren, Darren, sorry, can I yes. just be there? I beg your pardon. There was a, 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 just the guys are literally coming in the meeting now. Can we just start from the beginning? Apologies. Just start. Oh, they're just coming in? Yeah, good. That's it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Metals Exploration Investor Presentation. So at this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and could be submitted anytime by the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via Investor Meet Company dashboard and you'll be notified once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I would now like to hand you over to Darren um, Dowden, CEO of Metals Exploration. Good morning, Darren. Good morning, Paul. Thank you for your time. And thank you, everybody, for attending this uh, webinar of Metals Exploration. Um, I'm Darren Bowden, the uh, CEO, and I'm coming to you live from Manila in the Philippines. Um, we're going to go through our uh, investor presentation today. It was a presentation that was recently submitted to our uh, updated website. Um, it's, been a, it's been live for about a week. And um, I, I'll go through the presentation, focusing on um, most of the key detail around the, uh, the technical aspects of the recovery that we've seen over the last two years. There's a lot of overlapping information in some of the summary slides, so I'll probably skip over this so that we only talk to the same information once. Um, so please bear with me. If I do miss anything, uh, please just uh, submit a question and hopefully we'll catch it at the end. I'm going to try and keep the presentation to 35, 40 minutes so we have enough time to uh, have a question and answer session that hopefully covers all of the key questions that you guys uh, that you guys ask. Um, I'll move on to the introduction. And just for anyone who doesn't know, Metals Exploration owns and operates uh, the Ronruna Gold Mine in uh, Nueva Vizcaya. It's a mineral rich province in the Philippines. And it was developed uh, from greenfield to production. The Run Runo uh, mine uh, project at this stage contains uh, reserves of 11.7 million tonnes, an average grade of 1.38 grams per tonne, which equates to about 500,000 ounces of reserves. 
The project's fully permitted. Uh, we have the uh, highest environmental standards and um, about 98% of the workforce is Filipino, of which 28% are FEMA. To date, there's been about $300 million invested in the project. 2020 uh, results, um, uh, just under 68,000 ounces, all in sustaining costs of 12.59 an ounce. Um, that does include all corporate overhead and um, London costs as well. And uh, for a total revenue of $122 million in 2020. I'll move on to the next slide. Um, and just to talk through the strategy, um, we do focus on our people first and um, at this as of the 31st of March, achieved over 13,000, 13 million man hours without a reportable injury. Um, in a mining environment, that uh, that is something to speak of. And I take my hat off to all the staff and the team who have achieved that, uh, that result. Um, this led us to uh, re recently receiving the Safest um, uh, Surface Mining Operation Award and Safest Overall Mining Operation by the uh, Mines Geoscience Bureau. The um, uh, focus of our recovery was twofold. There was uh, a specific focus on the technical outcomes required to get the process plant into uh, a position where both recovery and throughput could uh, assist in getting us to a positive cash flow. And the other aspect of the recovery was a restructure of the, uh, the debt. Um, there are still some some outstanding issues around the uh, plant technical aspects, which I'll talk about as we go forward. The main one being um, the uh, Biox recovery solutions, which are still being implemented. Um, we are focused on improving our um, uh, exploration program. And the, the key focus here, uh, once we have clear access, is extensions of the existing ore body to the north, which I'll talk through in a little more detail. The restructuring of the debt, um, when we first arrived, um, Metalsnex was a, a, a company that did need some, um, um, uh, some help uh, with regards to its debt structures. Um, we started working diligently with the commercial banks and um, by um, August last year, we'd come up with a debt structure, uh, which gave us a very flexible uh, debt, uh, maintaining a minimum um, capital buffer, uh, payments being made after that capital buffer was maintained and therefore providing us with a, um, a short up balance sheet and uh, more flexible balance sheet at the end. Um, to date, we've paid uh, $24.3 million as at 31st of March and there is still $120 million of outstanding debt to be repaid, both senior and meds. Uh, don't need to talk to who I am, Mike. Are. You can read that at your leisure. Um, I don't want to talk to the Philippines uh, in general. Um, you guys can work, work through this. I see some questions popping up around the tax, and I will talk to those questions at the end of this uh, this presentation. What I did want to make uh, mention of is that the Duterte government has currently uh, come out in favour of mining and come out specifically in favour of um, open cut mining and large scale mining. Um, so it is a, a very positive move by the Duterte government to increase the opportunity for us to grow a business like, um, like FCF in country through acquisition and or exploration in other territories. Um, and this is uh, something that is a, a positive outcome given our operating knowledge in country and the people that we have on the ground. Um, I don't need to talk to the overview where we really covered that off. Um, I do want to um, uh, say, though, that, uh, you know, Ron Runo has been around for uh, 16 years now um, and uh, it, it is uh, an, an all body that um, I do believe uh, will increase uh, uh, as the years go forward. How much uh, that's going to be the case is going to be something that uh, will be determined through our exploration programs as we go forward. You can see the picture there, just giving you a, a brief outline. Uh, the RSI, residual storage impoundment, is the tailing facility from the process plant. The TUDS uh, stockpile area is the out-of-pit dump, um, which will become obsolete by the end of this year as we start uh, backfilling the void that's created by the mining uh, the mine plan. 
and uh, the process plant and the accommodation is all very close um, uh, in, in terms of uh, relative access to the mine. Um, when I'm on site, I walk everywhere. So it's a, it's a good fitness program for me just as much as it is to uh, get out and see the operations. Um, uh, I, I will talk to um, further detail around the um, operational record, but this graph just gives you a very strong indication of the performance increments that have been achieved over the, uh, the last couple of years. Um, the slight dip in 2020 is associated with uh, the issues we have had around um, COVID and uh, the reliability of the power transmission, which you've seen in the RNSs. Um, which did uh, impact our recoveries due to the biops going offline and into hibernation. Um, we have um, done some work on that and there is some questions to be answered as we go forward. I will talk more detail in what's uh, still outstanding in terms of that biops program um, once we get to the detail. Um, the critical actions undertaken in both mine and plant. Um, the mine pit shell we've redesigned. Um, there was um, an absolute requirement to maintain access over the um, uh, mine, which didn't exist previously. Um, I might just flick back to the first slide, um, and, and it gives you a clear indication of the mining ramps that now exist on the mining faces. So if you look at those ramps coming from the bottom of the pit all the way to the top, because that uh, the mine is actually moving to the north, uh, you have now access on all mining faces as you're sequencing from stage one through to stage five. In general, we've got about two stages open at any one time with the third stage going into pre-strip. And as that mining face moves north, we fill the back of the pit to the south um, using those access ramps running up and down the face. Just go back to where I was. Um, and as we've talked about, the mine schedule has now been uh, fully integrated and there is still further resource drilling required. We'll talk about that when we get to the exploration slide. Plant recoveries, uh, we're now consistently achieving over 80% recovery. Um, Biox is stable, um, but there still is some technical issues that um, we believe we've resolved, um, but the implementation of the uh, design modifications to ensure that they've been resolved are still ongoing. Um, However, with that said, 80% um, from where we started is a, a great, great achievement. Um, we are targeting to get above 85. Um, and at this stage, really, the key issue is to maintain a biox oxidation above 90%, which will increase CIL recovery to above 90%, uh, pushing us above that 85% recovery. Um, the, the real issue in the initial phases was to um, actually get the gold to biox. Uh, really, it was all being lost through flotation. And um, in the initial instance, we were able to um, uh, figure out the, the, the key co components of the uh, flotation recovery. Flotation's now averaging above uh, 87%. It's actually closer to 89%. Um, and, uh, you know, we have started with some of the implementation changes to the biox design, pushing us from a 65 up to an 83 recovery um, and trying to maintain that steady state operation. We do have uh, final modifications. Um, there is a further blower being um, uh, being put in as we speak, and there's some design modifications to the gearboxes and um, motors on the uh, secondary reactors, which is required to ensure that the air from that uh, fourth blower is um, is uh, delivered to the right locations. Um, I'm just uh, showing you this slide here, which is an interesting one. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to use this um, system. No, my I'm trying to uh, find the. It uh, doesn't work for me. Um, the that mining face you see there is actually 2018, and you can see that there's no ramp on the actual mining face itself. So to access this backfill void. Once you started backfilling on the um, the southern side and took that ramp out, it was going to be impossible, um, and that's why those uh, those mining ramps are so important, and why I, um, I I've made mention of them through this presentation, um, uh, which you can now see in in the slide that we have here. Uh, really, we um, uh, as we mentioned, uh, two stages are contiguously mined. At this stage is stage one and two. Stage three is in pre-strip. Um, backfill will commence into that southern pit uh, by Q4 this year, which increases our 
um, efficiency in the mining area, i.e. we go from nine, ten trucks down to five, six trucks. So there's a significantly increase in efficiency, um, which does uh, uh, give us a lot lower risk profile with regards to the movement of, uh, of material as we go forward. Um, access to stage three to five is being completed through a, uh, a skyway design from the, uh, the current outer pit dump. And um, really, the uh, the other optimization was the required uh, technical, a uh, geotechnical uh, design of the east wall, uh, where we were noticing um, the wall was not designed behind the fault, and um, there were were stability issues with that wall. Uh, that redesign has uh, led to some cutback work being done, um, which is uh, ongoing through the next uh, next two years. Um, with regards to the process plan, um, as we mentioned, uh, we, we've solved the issue around flotation. And one of the other key issues within the, um, the design that we've noticed um, is that uh, there, there is a significant higher dilution uh, rate than was uh, ever in the feasibility study. Um, that dilution rate is between 25 and 30 percent. At this stage, we've been able to uh, maximise the uh, plant milling operations to about 120 percent of design up to about 2.1 million tonnes. Um, we haven't been able to get it beyond that yet. Uh, we are working on doing so. And if that is an opportunity, that will increase our, um, our throughput and uh, uh, gold presented to the back end of the circuit. The um, uh, the reconciliation of uh, ounces processed versus ounces depleted um, is actually pretty good. Uh, there's not a significant mining loss against what was originally planned. Um, however, the area that we are in is well drilled and uh, has proven to stand up to the resource versus reserve um, modelling that has been done um, by us and, and previously. Um, as we've mentioned, Biox is stable. There are some modifications that are being implemented. Um, they won't be fine. The first one, which is the new blower, will be finalised in Q2. Uh, however, the, uh, the final implementation of the gearbox and motor changes on those secondaries uh, will be by the end of 2021, depending on lead time on those new components uh, that need to be implemented there. Uh, generally, we've been able to do a lot of this work and a lot of this increases in production with very minimal cost. Um, and uh, that's been one of the highlights of the uh, the program that's been implemented. Uh, it, it's focusing on low capital, high yield type uh, projects, and that has worked very well for us. As I said, uh, 2020, um, the overall gold recovery is 72.2%. However, that was still severely impacted by the pandemic with regards to the reliability of power. Um, we have spent some capital now on the power internal to the to the site, um, which has enhanced our um, our stability and reliability internally. However, we still have grid transmission issues if uh, if the power goes offline externally. That impact is significantly reduced now because of the reliability of the internal power supply. With regards to exploration, um, we have uh, identified two near mine targets. Um, we have been given a, a small budget this year to uh, drill a, a couple of holes in one of them. However, for me, the real focus for the mine extension and extending the mine life um, needs to be around the extension to the existing ore body. And the extension to the existing ore body will be north as we mine in that direction. Um, right now, there is limited drilling out there. There's limited drilling in that uh, stage five area, and that has been limited by the illegal miners who occupy that, uh, that area. Um, there is a, a clear focus to reduce that risk by um, resettling those legal miners, and we've been working diligently at that over the last year with a, a large portion of those miners being um, resettled as we speak, and uh, hopefully by Q3, the majority, or if not all, will be um, will be resettled, allowing us access to start the, uh, the drilling in that area, and I believe that is our key focus for the mine extension into the future. Um, what that number looks like, uh, I can't say, but uh, the fact of the matter is if there's illegal miners there, there's gold, we just need to drill it uh, and figure out what it looks like for us. The processing opportunities, uh, as we have gone forward, uh, as you can see, we are getting a reducing head grade. That was always in the plan. Um, and, and that's a reducing head grade at a higher dilution. 2021 is a bit of an abri uh, a, a year where we've got a, a 
bigger drop off than normal, and that is impacted by the access to stage three. If we do get access to stage three early, there might be an opportunity to bring some of the higher grade in stage three forward. However, that uh, that is just really a timing issue where that uh, that grade will come into play uh, in in 2022, giving us a, a bit of a increase in grade through 2022, which will be good to see once we've got all the uh, bike solutions in pace and um, an increased recovery as well. So we're hoping for a, um, a good recovery and uh, gold feed year in 2022 once those miners are removed. Um, on the next slide, you can see that uh, the throughput for the mill, um, absolutely critical to the economics of the business given the dilution rates. Um, if we weren't able to get the throughput up, uh, the gold feed to plant um, would not be offset by recovery and uh, by increasing that throughput, we have been able to offset some of those dilution issues and still maintain uh, that incremental recovery as we've gone forward. As I said, uh, in 2020, there is some aberrant uh, months due to some transmission and some uh, power failures, which puts bikes into hibernation. And as soon as bikes goes into hibernation, you are looking at a three to four week recovery time. Um, during that recovery time, you're direct feeding the ore to CIL and uh, that direct feed has a recovery of around about 50%. And that's what impacted that overall year uh, where we had three to four months with lower recoveries due to that, uh, that biox uh, feed directly to CIL. Um, and that's why the stability of biox is so critical for the business to maintain the recoveries that are required as we go forward. Um, if I move on to our uh, community relations, uh, health and safety, um, we uh, have focused uh, clearly as we've uh, come into the business on behavioural safety. Uh, we work uh, closely with the teams. Uh, we've implemented um, uh, golden rule programs, behavioural management. Uh, we've felt good safety programs. Um, we've uh, put in place uh, values for the business, where the business is focused on the values that we believe they need, uh, the people need to work and operate within our business. Um, and all of those things have made a, a, mass, a huge difference to the outcomes that we have seen over the last two years, uh, leading to us winning uh, the Safest Mining Award, the overall safest uh, mining operation, and um, even the, uh, the best mine supervisor. Uh, it was a good year for us um, in terms of uh, the outcomes in, in those safety awards. We actively promote uh, responsible mining practices within local communities, and we um, we do work with um, uh, air, in areas to to promote those uh, those sustainable options around mining and responsible mining. Um, we are one of the leading. Um, uh, reforestation groups in the country, uh, 2019, uh, 2018, 2019, we won the um, uh, Best Forestry Award and 2020, we come second. Um, we do lead the way from a mining um, uh, project within the country with regards to reforestation and rehabilitation and uh, maintain all our commitments in that area. Community and social development, um, this is a key focus. Uh, mines in developing countries, it is an absolute fundamental requirement for us to achieve um, a, a good neighbour status. And to do that, we need to focus on being good neighbours to our communities. Uh, this isn't just around building roads. It isn't around painting a school. This has to go to the fundamental integrity of what a community needs and that engagement strategy to work that out and work with the communities um, to achieve the results that actually benefit them. Um, in our case, uh, the key focus we do have is uh, health and education. Um, and these health and education programs are outside of the government requirement to, um, uh, to put one and a half percent of our uh, operating costs to, uh, to, to community funds. So we focus on uh, our internal requirements around health and education, um, uh, among other things. Plus we have a, another fund that is um, uh, sponsored by us and managed with the government to, to deliver infrastructure projects locally. Um, part of that um, in 2020 was um, the uh, community support uh, for food relief um, for local communities, particularly our families uh, affected under the quarantine restrictions who couldn't work. Um, and our food aid program um, was a, a huge success uh, within the local communities and local government. Okay. 
So in summary, um, we, uh, we've been very focused on uh, the recovery of uh, the project with the management team. Um, we have a, a very high functioning uh, group. Uh, we work very well together and um, we've integrated well into the local, uh, local workforce. Um, we now have uh, a, a long track record of operating in the Philippines and the new management team are focused on, on maintaining that track record, but also looking at where the opportunities might exist within the Philippines to further extend our influence and our opportunities. And 2021, we're focused on all sustaining costs, including all our head office costs of uh, 1275. Um, and as we've mentioned, there is a number of programs we are working on. There, as I said, I do believe the the the, uh, the near term upside to the Run Runo project is in the extension of the existing ore body. However, some of the near target exploration uh, greenfield sites are something that are part of the plan, and we will be focused on delivering um, outcomes to those as well. Um, as uh, anyone on the call probably recognises, greenfields is um, exactly what that uh, that means. Uh, it is uh, it does take some effort to to find something that might come into an economic space, but we will be focused on the key targets that we have seen. It is highly prospective ground, so there is some work to do there. Um, recently, and uh, last but not least, um, we have appointed um, a, a more independent board. Um, this is uh, something that I think is key for us to uh, move forward. And the three new members of the board are highly experienced um, with a new independent chairman. Um, just flicking to uh, uh, the board members, David Cather is uh, one of the new independents. He's taken over as the uh, new chairman. David has significant operating experience and uh, experience in the financial markets in London. Um, Jeremy Rathol, uh, a geologist by background, also um, significant experience in the mining industry, especially in investment banking, uh, but with that technical knowledge in the background. And Andrew Chubb, the last, last but not least, uh, new director, um, his partner and the head of the mining and natural resources um, of the uh, Henneman Partners Group. Um, Andrew worked with us on the uh, consolidation and the refinancing of the debt. Um, and uh, he has a, um, a long career within the, uh, the mining space as well. Uh, with that said, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the group and um, we are um, uh, very looking forward to moving forward and uh, making everything work as we go forward. Um, and uh, I will um, hand it back over to David for questions. Fantastic. Darren, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your question and pre uh, press send. Just while Darren takes a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard on the Investor Meet Company platform. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Darren, perhaps before we move on to the live Q&A, we had a number of pre-submitted questions that have come in from investors, and I'll just uh, run through those if that's OK. Um, the first one reads, how confident are you of exploration success and that, um, that will extend the mine life? Yeah, um, thank you, Paul. Uh, all exploration outside of the existing mine area, as I've mentioned, is greenfields. Um, so it's difficult to comment on what that looks like, even though I do believe the ground is quite prospective. I feel the real opportunity um, is to extend the mine life through the extension to the north as we're mining south to north on the stages one, two, three, four, and five. Um, the north is um, significantly underexplored, underdrilled, and um, as we're quite aware, has a large contingent of illegal miners in that area, which, uh, you know, they're probably the best uh, uh, best gold uh, explorers I've, I've found in my career in developing countries, um, not uh, the least of which being Colombia um, in a pre-existing life, uh, where they found a, uh, a 12 million ton ore, 12 million ounce ore body for me. Um, so I do believe there is uh, there is upside to the extension north, and that's where our focus will be um, once we've gone through the process of uh, peacefully resettling the miners. Thank you, Paul.
Thank you very much, um, Darren. Um, just moving on to the next question. Um, using the published 2021 production estimates, how much extra cash flow is generated for every $100 increase in gold price? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty simple equation. Um, the costs are, are basically fixed for that, uh, that answer. Uh, the only thing we would be paying excess is um, excise tax. Um, and therefore, we're looking at about a $6 million increment for every $100 uh, above the, um, uh, above the um, gold price. That's great. Thank so you. It's, it's quite substantive. Thank you very much. Um, next one we have here is, can you explain the benefits of having access to stages three to five in Q3 this year? Yes, um, as mentioned, uh, the mines, uh, mines sequ sequentially, the stage three is under development through the Skyway, but we don't have full access to stage three. Um, and if we could bring stage three into 2021, uh, it would add value to increasing the average um, average grade to the mill. Uh, however, this is not lost. It's basically just moved to 2022. We aren't affected by stage four and five. Really would be a benefit to be able to do some uh, resource drilling. But um, other than that, from a production point of view, there's little effect um, beyond stage three. Thanks, Darren. Um, with the improvements that have been made to the power su supply, does this mean that power outage that interrupted the biox process are effectively over? Yes, I, reduced but not over. Uh, we don't have control over the national grid, as, uh, as we've mentioned, um, so the reliability of transmission is something that we cannot control. However, the impact um, after the work that's been done on site and the capital upgrades that have been made to the, the cabling, um, to the backup systems, um, once we do lose in, uh, transmission power, those backup systems kick in. And even so, we got about a 10-minute delay. That 10-minute delay probably affects biox up to 72 hours, but we don't lose biox for a month. So um, there is still an associated risk, but it is significantly reduced due to the work that has been done. Great, thank you. Can you please confirm how much actual hard cash the company received from the current debt providers versus how much of that current debt is made up of interest and penalty charges? Yeah, so the MES principle was 41 million, and as of the 30th of April, the total MES debt is 71.5 million. Under the current scheme, MES debt gets paid after senior, um, if anyone's taken the time to read the papers. Um, so it is in our interest to draw the senior down as quick as possible because as soon as the senior has been paid off, the MES converts to a senior commercial debt, which means we drop that. Uh, that current interest rate from 15 to 7% or numbers of that order. The remaining senior debt's all principal and sits at about $45.8 million. Um, and year to date, we've paid 18.6 million of principal and interest over the loans. Great, thank you. Um, we have touched on this thing in the presentation, but how's the recent performance been at, um, at Run uh, Runo Project? Yeah, look, um, I, it, it's been great once we once we got stable and we started to look at the biox. Uh, you know, we had uh, record gold poured in Q4, record gold recovery in Q4, record sales in Q4. Um, that's uh, been uh, enhanced in um, Q1 2021 with a sustained uh, gold recovery above 80% for the first time in the history of the project. Um, and really, the only uh, thing outstanding is our focus on managing those uh, those biox uh, biox upgrades. We do have um, still, you know, the COVID issues are still affecting reliability and uh, logistics. Um, but in general, those uh, are more minor, rather major issues, um, and hopefully won't uh, impact us significantly this year as we bring biox fully online with the design changes that are made. Dan, I think you, you pretty much have covered this off just um, in case there's anything further you can add. You recently appointed three new non-executive directors. Can you tell us why and what they bring to metals exploration? But if there is anything further you could add, that'd be great. Yeah, look, I, I suppose I did mention, um, you know, the majority of uh, our board uh, pre, um, pre-search for the new independent directors was um, just nominees from the major shareholders. So we didn't feel that there was, and the company didn't consider that we necessarily had a balanced board. So we were looking to balance the board, give the board more independence, which would support ideals from the minor shareholders rather than just the major shareholders. So after an extensive search, as I've said, we've uh, 
we've now uh, have um, David Cather, Jeremy Rathall and uh, Andrew Chubb have joined the board and um, really that experience, um, I'm very much looking forward to working with them further. That's great. The final pre-submitted question we have here, what are your plans for this year? What should investors be looking for this year? Yeah, so our key focus is consolidation. Um, it's to get the targets that we've uh, put in front of ourselves um, uh, achieved. It's to get the upgrades finalised and um, to achieve a more sustained, higher recovery process in the plant. Um, this is going to lead, hopefully, this is going to lead to a, uh, we, we put out a forecast now, uh, first time, um, with a production range of 64 to 90, 64,000 to 69 thousand ounces. Um, the key issue there being the grades drop, the recovery is up, and we're being able to maintain a range that we've achieved for the last three years at a lower head grade. Um, all in sustaining costs, as I mentioned, 1275. And uh, really, last but not least, the, the key risk to the business are the peaceful resettlement of the remaining illegal miners. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Darren. That does conclude the pre-submitting question. Um, if I could just ask you to click on the Q&A tab, obviously you can see investors have submitted a number of questions during the presentation. Uh, perhaps if I could hand back to you, Darren, if you could just start at the top and work your way through those um, that are appropriate for you to, to respond to, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. No problem. That sounds great. Um, uh, Nick submitted the question, uh, what current future COVID protocols have uh, do you have will be put in place to protect company the company workforce, and really it's uh, not just company workforce; it's comp company operations because uh, a sustained um, healthy workforce means we can sustain our operations. We have a multi-layered COVID strategy uh, to control the risk of COVID and ensure that we maintain operations. Our strategy involves the engagement with the local health authorities called the MHO, um, and to ensure that all our procedures and protocols are aligned with this, uh, with this organization. The strategy starts with uh, offsite testing, Prior to the entry of uh, people on shift rotation, where all employee, employees need to present a valid COVID test prior to starting their shift. Um, at this stage, you know we we have probably 300 people coming back on shift every week, and there's at least six to ten people who will um, uh, test positive prior to either leaving their uh, province to uh, make the journey to site, or um, who have been tested by us at the front gate. To support this, we actually purchased two new um, antigen rapid testing machines and all the local community can come to our front gate 24 hours prior to their shift and get tested um, to check whether they are negative so that they can come on shift the next day. Um, in conjunction with this, um, we have started uh, a significant amount of random tests on site. Um, and we have a buddy system where if someone's starting to show symptoms, then it is an obligation of buddies or their friends to report. And we work very diligently to get these communications out there. We test in the vicinity of 50 to 60 people every day on a random test. Um, and at this stage, we are down to uh, basically no cases. Um, we had uh, one case about five days ago. The minute we have a case, so we, have, uh, we do um, uh, very detailed contact tracing on site. Anyone who becomes a close contact, if they're local community, they're sent home to isolate. If they're not local community, they go to our isolation facilities, which we manage ourselves. Um, one of them is a med medical facility and the other is a, a simple isolation facility for managing uh, people who can't travel home to their province because they've been in close contact. There's then a protocol around how many times they have to test before they can come out of that facility back to work or go home. Um, if local people are found um, with uh, COVID prior to entering the site, um, then the local authorities, the MHO, take these people um, and start the contract tracing and the isolation off site. So working hand in hand with the local authorities, we manage um, uh, pr people external to the local province and they manage people internal to the local province. Um, lastly, uh, we've worked diligently with the MHO, the local authority, and we've been able to source vaccines for all our employees and contractors, and we'll start a vaccination program uh, mid-July and hopefully have everybody vaccinated and therefore a workforce by end, uh, end August, early September. And that is our focus on COVID. Um, um, Michael E, uh, can you give us details about the 50% government tax? There's a couple of questions around this. Um, so 
I'll answer this as it's stated and maybe a little bit broader so I, I pick up the uh, the question further down. Um, the FTAA, which is the agreement that we have, uh, an umbrella um, where we have a five-year window from the start of commercial operation um, where we pay zero tax, okay? After this point in time, we have a 50% tax regime and that 50% tax regime will start mid-2022. Uh, so we've got basically a year of production left um, where we don't have uh, any tax beyond excise tax and VAT, um, and then we will start paying a 50% tax on uh, on income. Now, that 50% tax is all encompassing. It does take into account any VAT, any local taxes, all taxes that are paid, um, it all are accounted for within that 50%. There's not add-ons to that 50% beyond what, uh, what we would normally pay. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. But we've got about a window, a year left of that uh, that five-year window where tax is not paid. Um, Nick uh, W, uh, great safety stats. Can I suggest you record as people hours? I apologise profusely to anyone out there who uh, <laughs> who's got a got an old mining guy uh, and, and caught him out in the the words he's so used to using. Um, my my bad, and we will change that in the presentation update and resend. Uh, thank you very much for that comment. Yeah, um, I, I look, uh, Nathan P, um, respect to the circa of the 20 million company debt, uh, I look, I don't feel I can answer this question um, adequately at this time. All I can say, uh, sorry, I'll read the question in full. In respect to the, uh, to the circa 20 million a company did is the board able to seek alternative to reduce the high interest rates um, to the current lenders or are there restrictions from the major shareholders who provided this debt um, in place to stop this? Um, that's a very complicated question. It's something that um, uh, I probably can't answer in full. All I can say is that the company is absolutely laser focused on drawing down the senior debt at this stage uh, as fast as possible, so the MES debt will convert to a more commercial rate as the new senior debt. Is the mining equipment now working well from Michael E? Um, we are still having um, certain issues, uh, Michael, around some of the um, um, some of the equipment. There is reliability issues. Um, I and you will find this everywhere in the world right now. Trying to get parts for mobile equipment, something that you get off the shelf you know, two years ago is now six month lead time. Um, we have started buying critical spares and we have critical spares coming into the business. Actually, we started that last year. Uh, however, we are seeing that even some of the smaller items that you would think would normally be off the shelf, we are struggling to get in a timely fashion, whether it's purchase, whether it's logistics. Um, so there is still a reliability issue around some of our mobile equipment um, and um, that is um, affecting our production in the shorter term. Um, so it's not uh, it's all, not all roses yet for anyone coming out of COVID, but uh, we are working hard uh, to try and maintain that reliability as high as possible. That's why our key priority in the mining sequence in 2021 is to uh, effectively uh, start backfill into the southern pit because that reduces our reliance on a large equipment fleet and increases our productivity significantly, making it uh, a lower risk uh, that we can easy, more easily control as we go into the future. Um, Ashley B, morning. Uh, a few items, please. Confidence in scope to extend mine life. I think I've adequately answered this question. Um, at the moment, the company reports a cash available for use and total interest bearing liabilities every quarter. It would be great if uh, every quarter the company could simply report the net debt figure and comparison to the previous quarter. This would be in line with other miners. Um, can you confirm? Uh, and by the way, the CFO is sitting with me, so uh, he'll take that on board and uh, we'll look at uh, if we have to um, uh, maybe not change, but report as well to uh, satisfy that. We'll look at that, Ashley. Um, uh, not that I can answer it straight off the top of my head. Uh, can you confirm the cutoff grade and in the higher pricing environment, does this improve mine life? The cutoff grade currently sits at uh, 0.56 grams a ton. Um, there, there is an opportunity. Um, we are rerunning the optimizations in August this year. Once uh, with the new res, the, the new resource 
a definition drilling that we have done does flow into the resource model. We will be creating a new um, a new mine planning model where we will do optimizations around the mine plan using the higher uh, pricing scenarios. Um, I will say though that the previous work that was done was done on an MPV basis and therefore it provided um, through different forcing factors the optimum cutoff grade for our pit. Even with higher pricing, that should not change significantly. Okay. There, so you're looking at optimizing NPV versus optimizing total resource tons. Um, we will be doing that work. Uh, that work will be, be available later this year. It won't change the short term aspects of the way we do business. Um, and if more ore does come into the mine plan because of that, what it will do, it will lower the head grade. It might extend mine life and it will be that extension to mine life versus the cash up front that will be offset and uh, valued on an MPV basis as we go forward. Um, last, uh, can you confirm the cutoff? The last question uh, from Ashley. A uh, fantastic to see the company engaging more now with its shareholders. Can such calls become more of a regular thing? Um, Ashley, uh, look, um, I, I like this as much as I like crotching sheep. Um, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, it, it's actually, uh, that, that's actually, I've taken that as a cliche from Mal Gibson when he was interviewed once. Um, however, uh, with that said, uh, I do like uh, engaging and, and talking about the business. So um, I do believe this will become uh, more of a focus for us. Um, we are now in a position where we have a business that has potential. We are in a, uh, have a business that has good cash flows. Um, we, have a, we have a story to tell and we are looking forward to telling it. So um, look forward to engaging more with you in the future, Ashley. Alan, um, good to see you online. Um, what is the number of ounces forecast in gold production in 2022? Well, that will depend on the, uh, the optimization. Um, right now, uh, at the, in the current forecast, I can't give you a, a number, but it will be more than what we are targeting this year, purely and simply because we will be increasing head grade. Our total tons feed to the plant won't change. We'll be targeting 2.1. Um, with the increased head grade, we will get uh, an increased ounces in production and therefore it is higher than 2021 at this stage. However, as I said, if that optimization sees an extension to mine life at a lower cutoff, that could come back down. So I'm not going to give you a, a firm commitment of what those look like until that optimization work is done and uh, a new MPV can be found to optimize the, uh, the project around that higher pricing scenario. Um, in 2022-2023 is the target, this is uh, from Kashmir S, uh, is the target gold output likely to increase to 100,000 ounces as per the FS? Um, Kash, uh, I, I, and sorry, Kashmir, I, I, I shouldn't shorten your name, it's a, it's a bad Australian habit and I apologise. Uh, <laughs> the CFO is laughing at me. Um, the the answer is no um quite uh, to put it bluntly why because uh, the feasibility did not include a dilution um and the dilution that actually exists in the mine as i've said uh, in the presentation is between 25 and 30 percent so if you had a um an average ore uh, in the feasibility of 1.5 the average feed to the plant is 1.2 um and while we have been able to push up the tons through the plant, um, the overall impact of that is quite significant in terms of what the um, the ounces output can be. I would also like to caveat that um, we're targeting a, a recovery after all the work that's been done of 85%, okay? And if we can get to 85% with the plant we have, we will be happy. Now, the feasibility also had a 92% recovery because there was a significant amount of secondary losses which were not accounted for in the feasibility that once you account for those losses, um, it does reduce the overall recovery um, down to the numbers that we are, we are targeting. Um, the, what is the total debt outstanding? Please and schedule it and the schedule for paying it down. Well, the schedule for paying it down is uh, Simon S. Um, the schedule of paying down is purely driven by the uh, the gold price. If the gold price pops to over 2000 then the, the senior debt um, could easily be paid off by mid next year. If the gold price drops, then we may never pay the debt off. I, I Look, I cannot answer that uh, that question in full. Um, the debt as of the 31st of March was $120 million as previously stated. 
Trevor S, can you speak to the remaining tax shelter and when the company will pay the corporation tax? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, um, it's uh, August 2022, Trevor, um, and it will then become a 50% overall tax. Um, yeah, Neil M, um, uh, all in costs this year go from 175 to 275 this year. This suggests quite a, a significant increase. Look, there's two things associated with that. Um, we have been able to manage the uh, marginally higher grade for the first quarter through the plant because of the stockpiles that it did exist. Those stockpiles are running out and the plant, the uh, sequencing, as we've mentioned, coming into the from the mine into the uh, plant at this stage is reducing in grade and therefore we are dropping ounces as we go forward against what was achieved in the first quarter. Um, secondly to that, there was an underspending capital in the first quarter. Um, we are still trying to manage that below the budget, but uh, there is a catch up associated with that capital as well. Combining both of those issues, Neil, uh, Neil, and we will see um, that uh, number push up to the 275, um, which is our, um, our estimate at this stage. Um, do you see other opportunities to extract other minerals in future stages? No, uh, we're a gold mine. Our process plant only processes sulphide golds. Uh, it will be difficult to go any further than that. Is the new blower, Chris S, is the new blower installed and what effect will it have on recovery? Um, the new blower is being installed as we speak. Um, there is secondary um, uh, modifications, as I've mentioned, in the uh, bioc circuit required to use this air effectively, but it the increasing recovery is associated with the increased oxidation of sulfur through biox. Um, we are expecting a small up, uh, uplift um, with the blowers and then a secondary uplift with the changes in the secondaries. The biox design, um, do I have time? I have, uh, I have a couple of minutes. Um, I'll, I'll try and be a little bit um, uh, technical here. The biox design has two stages, primary and secondary. The primaries were supposed to, were supposed to achieve a 70% oxidation and therefore the secondaries had only 30% of the work to do. The primaries have actually only achieved 45 to 50%. They've never achieved above that and they can't achieve above that at the design sulfur throughput. What we've had to do is therefore upgrade the secondaries with higher air and higher motor power to get them to achieve the rest of that oxidation. The testing we've done shows that that is possible. Okay, so that is what we're working on. And once all of that work's done, we will see those incremental upgrades in biox as we go forward. Current mine life, um, Trevor S is at this stage 2026. Um, to 2027 is where we are. And as I've mentioned, the extensions are to the north of the pit. Uh, Neil M, um, Q4 production was strong. Uh, this reduced in Q1. Again, this is back to head grade. Um, and I've already meant, uh, uh, answered this question through the issue associated with head grade. Um, Q1 from a throughput point of view was the same. Uh, recovery point of view was higher. The head grade was significantly less. Uh, Trevor S, uh, current gold price, um, at the current gold price, when do you anticipate the company being debt free, assuming no additional debt taken on? Um, I think the best way to answer that question is it's worthwhile going to the investor note that was put out by uh, Henneman Partners. Um, there is some uh, information in there which gives their uh, take on that. Um, we, we believe that's uh, fairly reasonable. Um, without any other changes. Um, it does target a, uh, a gold price about the 1850 mark and it does have a recovery of 85% um, and it did use our baseline information that come out of the life of my plan. So I think that is probably the one you should uh, read if you want to understand that question in detail. How likely is it to achieve the target within the next year or so planned due to this pandemic? Yeah, look, um, our protocols work on site. We know that. Um, we don't, uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't pick up the name of who asked that question. There will be and always is reliability issues that are going to affect us during the pandemic. And I think every miner is seeing that around the world. Um, at this stage, we're able to manage them and we're able to minimise them. Um, and as long as we keep focused on that, I do believe that our target range is viable. Um, and we are still tracking well to that target range. So um, at this stage, uh, my answer is it's uh, it's doable. Um, and unless you get an Indian uh, strain that comes through and puts a third wave through 
the um, the Philippines, which uh, puts uh, all communities at risk, and the government uh, makes changes to its protocols. Um, I believe we're in good um, in a good position to make uh, maintain that uh, that uh, run rate that we've targeted. That's all the uh, the Q and A questions. I think I went through all of them. So I hope um, I hope that answered everything. Uh, Paul, over to you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks so much for answering every single question that's come in. That's greatly appreciated. And I'm sure greatly appreciated by investors. Um, just before we redirect investors to give you some feedback, Dan, just perhaps a, a final couple of words just to wrap up, if possible, please. Yeah, look, um, I, I I really do appreciate uh, the the investors that we have. Um, I've worked closely with uh, a lot of the minority groups and I know the minority groups, the minority shareholders formed uh, blocks and um, uh, I tried diligently through uh, through the process over the last two years um, to work closely with those groups to ensure that they were engaged and part of the um, part of the process to to rebuild Metals X. And I'd like to uh, say thank you to all the groups, um, um, uh, Les, Alan, uh, Josh, uh, in particular. Um, thank you for your time. I do uh, I, I do think that the um, the debt that we do have. Um, right or wrongly as part of uh, the maintenance of an ongoing company um, in the first four years of operation. Um, if that debt wasn't put in by the major shareholders, uh, we wouldn't be here. So um, realistically, it's a debt we're dealing with um, and it's a debt that uh, while we, we would love to see it go away or be less or whatever, it's something that um, uh, has saved this company. And I think uh, people need to recognise what the major shareholders did to ensure that this company did um, at least survive through a, a period of uh, difficult operations. Um, generally, um, I'm very, uh, very happy with the team I have. Um, we have great local support and I feel that uh, Run Runo is an operation we will um, we will extend and uh, hopefully we can um, provide you guys uh, with some, some real outcomes into the future. Uh, thank you for your time. Darren, thank you very much indeed for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session? You should be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that Darren and the management team could better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments for you to complete and be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Metals Exploration PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session. Thank you and good morning.